Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show on a never-ending victory lap. After permanently and finally murdering Dr. Wily without letting a single drop of his blood stain our hands, the seemingly peaceful Dr. Cossack has taken advantage of the power vacuum and unleashed eight new robots with the ultimate goal of scratching Rockman's paint. How much more harmless is Dr. Cossack than Dr. Wily? I think you already know the answer. Can you beat Rockman 4 without getting hit? The rules are identical as always. We must beat the game from start to finish without ever taking a single point of damage. If we suck and die at any point, the run is forfeit and we go all the way back to the title screen. For convenience, we'll be doing this run on the Rockman Classics Collection version, but all emulator functions including save states, rewinds, autofire, and turbo CPU are banned. Functionally, it'll be as if we were playing on the original Famicom with its original controllers. With the rules set, let's route our suffering. Luckily, the routing will be exceptionally easy this time. First, Toadman for Rain Flush, one of the two most used weapons in our arsenal. Second, Brightman, who is weak to Rain Flush and gives us Flash Stopper, the other most used weapon in our arsenal. Third, Pharaoh Man, who is weak to Flash Stopper and gives us Pharaoh Shot, which, while not used as much as the other two, will be the third most used weapon in our arsenal. Additionally, in Pharaoh Man stage, we'll acquire item number B, granting the very useful Balloon Mobility Weapon. By that point, we'll have all major tools in our arsenal, and all remaining stages will be as easy as we can get them. Toadman stage will actually be one of the most difficult, claiming a huge chunk of failed runs. During this first section, slowly and methodically clear the way, charging up a shot before each penguin and firing at them right as they spawn in. Once you reach the first ledge, you can safely slide below every enemy until the first pit. Here you'll encounter a set of penguins too high to shoot. Instead, lure them to spawn and jump over. Repeat on the following penguin and you'll be free to chain slides below every enemy for the remainder of the screen. You should be able to easily breeze through the waterways until reaching the snail mini-boss. You'll need its attack pattern memorized. After briefly opening its eyes, it will either toss a bomb or boomerang its eyeballs. The bomb is super easy to dodge, but the eyeballs are super not, so we'll want to bait them before they're fired. Just before the snail's eyes open, do two jumps, one to get extra damage in and the second to ensure you're in midair at the proper time. If done correctly, the eyeballs will be sent straight forward and completely miss you. Important note, the timing of the eyes opening is different depending on the prior attack, occurring nearly immediately after tossing a bomb. You'll need both timings memorized. Immediately after, you'll rematch the snail, this time with pits at the edges and flowing water interfering with your movement. The overall strategy is the same. Note that Rockman will stay in place while standing directly under the waterfall. Use that as your default position, running out and jumping to the left in between the snail's attacks. After it's dead, continue on to the stage's last screen. The jumping fish here are mostly easy, though the third can be scary. Time for the first boss of the game, Toadman! <laughs> I offer no tips. He is impossible. With Rain Flush in the bag, we enter Bright Man stage. We won't actually be using Rain Flush until the boss fight, since all enemies are extremely easy to deal with using the standard buster. The Grasshopper Spike hallways might look dangerous, but they're realistically practically auto-scrollers. One note, however, that you should only jump well before or after the Grasshopper is jumped. Attempting to jump right as it's jumping will cause you to re-land on it mid-jump, embarrassing you for the tenth of a second you have left on this earth. You also might get worried in the final room since at first glance it seems complicated, but it's deceptively simple. Even if you miss shooting the incoming light bulbs, you'll dodge under them automatically. In all, Brightman stage is the easiest of the initial eight. To make up for it, Brightman himself is the hardest of the initial eight. First things first, we need to hit his off switch. Brightman is programmed to freeze you in place when his own health is at one of several specific values. Don't worry if you suck at brain thinking though, knowledge of 
the exact values is unnecessary. Ever coincidentally luckily, if your first attack deals exactly one damage to Bright Man, for example with a single Buster Pellet, then he will never reach any of the freeze values so long as you deal exactly four damage with each subsequent attack, which is exactly the amount dealt with Rain Flush. We'll unfortunately still need to worry about Bright Man's base moveset, which is its own cannibals. Bright Man has two attacks he'll choose at random, either jumping to your current location or firing a semi-random set of three pellets. One of those three pellets will go down, one will go up, and one will go straight forward, but the precise order is random. From the opposite side of the screen, only the straight shot will hit you at ground level, easily dodged with the jump. Bright Man actually favors shooting at long range, so with decent luck, he'll get himself stuck in an endless cycle of pellets while his health slowly drains. We can't rely on good luck, though. We need a strategy that beats Bright Man 100% of the time. If he jumps toward you twice in a row, he'll end up in the middle of the arena, at which point multiple bullet directions might be able to hit you at ground level. To account for this, rather than running away, stand your ground and jump directly in front of Bright Man's face. It's incredibly scary, but memorize the timing and you'll be able to jump over all three shots regardless of direction, eliminating that element of RNG. And obviously, be prepared for Bright Man to jump toward you at any moment. Once Bright Man's burned out, we obtain Flash Stopper, which we'll be abusing in conjunction with Rain Flush in Pharoman stage. As I'm sure you've noticed, Rain Flush is a screen nuke, unleashing its damage shortly after the missile pod leaves the top of the screen. Use it before and during each trek through the desert sands to melt every scorpion before they can touch you. If rationed well, you'll have two shots remaining when you reach the end of the screen. Rather than jumping down, use Rush Coil to enter the secret screen to the right with Flash Stopper equipped. Fire Flash Stopper the moment you've entered the screen and jump along the surface of the desert, mashing the fire button along the way. You may be tempted to slide, but we need our timing to be precise, and Flash Stopper's timer is a little bit funky. For whatever reason, Flash Stopper's countdown timer pauses whenever Rockman is sliding, making it ultimately last longer. That probably sounds like a good thing, but on this screen, I've timed things out exactly without slides. Flash Stopper's effect will deactivate and be available for reactivation just before Rockman reaches a spawning scorpion. After jumping over it, you'll be safe to slide the rest of the distance. At the end of this path is item number B, though we won't be seeing it in use for another couple stages. Rockman will teleport into Pharaoh Man's Pyramid, skipping a chunk of the level. Rainflush is capable of damaging shielded enemies, so use your last two shots to take out both bats along the moving platform corridor. The Mummy Joe corridor can be blasted through free thanks to Flash Stopper. Use it when approaching each mummy before they fire, freezing them in place so you can take them out with buster shots. Once you reach the boss door, don't go directly in. Run back and forth to the final mummy and farm for weapon energy. You'll want to have at least three quarters full flash stopper energy before jumping into Pharaoh Man's room. Right as his health is reaching full, mash the fire button. Since Pharaoh Man is weak to Flash Stopper, it will stop him in place, leaving him open to buster shots. Keep spamming that fire button and up the pace when Flash Stopper is about to deactivate to ensure it gets reactivated ASAP. As wonderfully stupidly easy as this is, sorry, but Pharaoh Man isn't going to be embarrassing himself 100% of the time. There exists a relatively rare glitch that can completely screw us over. I'm not sure on the details since this is pretty stupidly specific knowledge, but it has something to do with Pharaoh Man's invulnerability frames activation or deactivation occurring on the same frame that Flash Stopper activates or deactivates. However it occurs, it's so difficult to anticipate it's effectively random, and if it occurs, Pharaoh Man will move and attack, Flash Stopper be damned. To anticipate this, keep a bit of distance from Pharaoh Man while mashing. If the glitch occurs, keep trying to deal damage while getting a lay of the land. If you're lucky, there will be a thin opening to weave between Pharaoh Man's bullets and continue your barrage from behind. Once Pharaoh Man is dead, take a break from weakness order and head into Dive Man stage. You could come here later if you want, but I personally find Dive Man to be one of the harder remaining bosses, and we won't need any more gear to make his stage easier. Throughout the stage, launch Rain Flush as you approach Mets, sweeping them up before you enter their range. Turns out mini bosses aren't immune to Flash Stopper, so freeze the whale mini boss's soul in place and kill it before it exists. At the halfway point, you'll meet Eddie, who will give you one of several items. Don't grab it immediately 
though, Eddie can only give you one randomly chosen item per stage visit. Leave and re-enter the screen before collecting that item to force another dice roll. Keep re-rolling and eventually Eddie will drop an E-Tank. Use the Buster and or Rain Flush in the Manta Ray Corridor while jumping over and sliding under the Jellyfish Claws, save for this one which you should freeze with Flash Stopper before sliding. After exercising another whale, intentionally suck and fall in the next pit like an absolute loser. This strategy rewards us with item number W, a mobility item that we'll barely be touching but is at least barely worth the effort spent obtaining it. After, you'll teleport to the beginning of the Manta Ray screen, where the same strategies as before apply. In the last two screens, the bombs will detonate themselves if you stand relatively close-ish, so be patient and let them blow up before crawling forward. To safely defeat Dive Man, we'll be abusing knowledge of his attack pattern to lock him into a predictable sequence. His only two attacks are diving and firing torpedoes. The choice between these two will likely seem random on your first few fights, but on closer inspection, he's actually only reacting to Rockman's current distance, with no random variables whatsoever. If you use the same strategy every time, he'll react the same way every time. He begins by charging toward you. Jump over, stall a little, then slide away to the opposite side of the screen. Provided you're not too close to Dive Man, he'll now fire three missiles before charging towards you again, at which point the pattern can be repeated. Just keep an eye on your distance. If you're too close, he'll break the pattern and stop firing missiles to dive towards you instead. Once Dive Man is dead, initiate Victory Dance. Holy crap, it's windy outside too. That's actually particularly bad, because if anything's going to make my power go out, it's going to be wind. <laughs> Holy crap, this has got to be a new record. Can we get a, can, can we get like a high score chart for longest time spent delaying the boss timer? <laughs> Next target, Ringman. Fun fact, in practice, I thought this first screen was 100% consistent, but it is not. Sometimes, the turret will fire above you, and others, the turret will fire below you. If it fires below, run to the left to get yourself situated properly. On each screen of this upward climb, open with Rain Flush to clear every enemy ASAP, and be prepared to adjust position if any of the turrets get a shot off. Once at the top, switch to Flash Stopper, jump into the next screen, and mash fire. If timed correctly, the Hippo Miniboss will begin the battle while demonically possessed, which serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever. The Hippo itself won't be frozen, but the missiles it fires will, making it functionally harmless. Use the Buster to easily trek through the following screen, swap to Pharaoh Shot to take out the saw blade, and fall into the next screen while hugging the right wall. The Ring Mini Boss is incapable of hurting you while flush against the wall, and will die from a single charged Pharaoh Shot. The next screen features another hippo, who can be safely demonized. Following along, use your remaining Flash Stopper ammo to freeze and defeat the upcoming roller enemies before they can even spawn in. At the reverse light platforms, use a combination of Buster Shots and Rain Flush to take out every Saturn as you approach. An important note, the timing on Rain Flush is a bit different depending on how it's fired. If it has enough time to activate its rocket jet, the rain will come quickly. If, instead, you fire too close to the top of the screen and the pod despawns before the rocket jet appears, the rain will stall a few seconds. And while not relevant on this stage specifically, if you scroll the screen too far away, then the rain will be cancelled entirely. After this screen is a second ring mini-boss, but unlike the first, you're no longer safe while hugging the wall. Rather than fighting, jump over with Balloon and bid this mini-boss a heartfelt nope. Ringman himself has a very simple and easy to dodge non-random pattern, with one critical exception. The very first ring he throws can be difficult to jump over. To bridge the gap, jump on a balloon as soon as the battle begins, then jump down and equip Pharaoh Shot to fight properly. Jump over Ringman as he approaches, slide for distance, jump over his chasing ring, and throw a shot back as he's landing from his own jump. Be patient, he'll counterattack if you shoot him while he's running towards you, but obviously that becomes a non-issue when dealing the final blow. Next up in the weakness chain is Dustman. Do not step forward like some kind of dumb stupid idiot when the stage begins, otherwise a shield will spawn and run into you. Instead, equip and use Flash Stopper. 
For some likely obscure programming reason, enemies who can only be harmed from a specific direction, like the shields, can be harmed from any direction while frozen. Keep the world frozen all the way until you reach these rising platforms, at which point switch to Ferroshot. Not only can you aim Ferroshot up and down, the orb hovering over Rockman's head acts as its own hitbox, protecting you from any enemies above. In the Crusher Room, carefully edge forward with the Buster. The trickiest segment is this final set of garbage blocks, guarded by a Met immediately after a crushing wall, leaving no room for caution. Slide forward right when the wall rises high enough and focus on taking out the two rows of blocks directly under the ceiling. Try not to trigger the Met's attack until just before Rockman reaches ground level, then run forward and buster it as usual. Timing is a bit tight, but actually more lenient than it appears. I've only failed a handful of runs here, and all of them were due to triggering the Met early. Using Flash Stopper and Rain Flush, you can kill every remaining enemy in the level without resistance. Time for Dustman. He'll always begin the fight by firing dust, which explodes four ways diagonally as soon as it reaches your horizontal position as of the moment it was fired. While this can be skillfully jumped over with precise timing, if you're bad at video games, you can substitute the skill with Balloon. For the rest of the battle, keep at a mid-distance, swapping between Balloon and Ring every time Dustman acts. You'll have to improvise depending on which attacks he randomly uses, but regardless, you'll always have enough time and ammo. With Dustman finally living up to his namesake, bring Dust Crusher into Skullman stage. On the first screen, spam the buster in the narrow hallways to take out the turrets and their bouncing projectile safely. Against turrets in more open areas, swap to Rain Flush, which kills the turrets and projectiles in one hit. Use a charged Pharaoh shot to one-hit KO the Skeleton Joe on the next screen. Swap back to Rain Flush and use it to flush the entire next corridor. The entire rest of the stage can be cheesed through effortless abuse of Flash Stopper. I only note to stop for a moment in a safe spot just before the timer runs out, to ensure time is always frozen while you're in motion. Pay very close attention to the Skullman strat because it is incredibly easy to mess up. Enter the battle with Dust Crusher equipped, stare Skullman in the eyes, and take a bathroom break. Skullman, more than any other boss, is incapable of independent thought, so if the player does absolutely nothing, Skullman will see the brilliance in the strategy and shamelessly steal it. Otherwise, Skullman has two moves. If the player presses left or right while Skullman is awaiting input, he'll respond with three aimed shots. If the player presses the B button while Skullman is awaiting input, he'll jump slightly in front of Rockman, pull up his shield for a random amount of time, then run forward. Note that he'll never respond with the same move three times in a row, opting for the other move instead. Skullman does not listen to the A button or down directional input, meaning you can still move yourself forward via slides without triggering a response. You can even hit him with Pharaoh Shot since he only reacts when the B button is pressed, not released, but he's immune to it, so this serves no purpose beyond the entertainment value. Regardless, since he only moves when you move, you can patiently map out a plan until you're ready. Bait him into firing, let the first two shots travel horizontally, and jump just before the third shot is fired. This ensures that third shot travels upward, so you won't have to dodge it after landing. You can get in some extra damage by shooting him during the barrage when he's not paying attention to your input. When he jumps forward, try to hit him just before he lands. If timed right, you can shoot him again just before his invulnerability frames end. While the initial dust block won't hurt him, it will split into four smaller projectiles a moment after, which can still hit Skullman even inside his shield. Wait in place for his shield to lower, shoot him with dust, and immediately jump over. It's important to note he'll start awaiting input immediately after. I'll leave it to you to choose whether you find it safer to run away and dodge the bullets, or stop moving just in time so it's safe to patiently slide. Whatever you choose, repeat the strategy until Skullman is nothing but bones. We now enter the final of the initial eight stages, Drillman, which we won't be talking about long. As always, Rain Flush and Flash Stopper will bypass the majority of enemies. Important note in this spike hallway, don't worry about the upper spikes, your maximum jump height doesn't actually reach them. There shouldn't be any major surprises until Drillman himself. Drillman was one of the hardest bosses in this run to find a viable strategy for, but with that finalized strategy, he became one of the easy ones. When he drills underground, hug an edge of the screen, wait a couple seconds, and then run away while jumping. You'll need the timing memorized, but the safe window is very forgiving. When he's back in the arena, you'll need to react to his every movement instantly. 
He'll dive back underground, jump to your current location, or run towards you while firing drill missiles. The third option is the most dangerous, with nearly perfect preemptive movement required to dodge both the missiles and Drillman himself. Pause buffer just as Drillman is acting to give yourself extra reaction time. If you see he's walking towards you, swap to balloon and jump on, bypassing the need for any skill in dodging. You'll still need to return to the ground eventually, which takes a bit of prior knowledge to time safely. Drillman always fires his drills at specific intervals of time, and stops firing once he reaches a wall. If he started walking from the opposite wall, he'll fire four total shots. Otherwise, you'll just have to figure out when he's done firing based on your own memorization of the timing. It takes a bit of practice, but once you've cemented all the relevant knowledge, Damageless Drillman becomes trivial. Another very minor note, if Drillman dives underground with 1 HP and you have some rain flush to spare, swap over to it and you can finish Drillman off while underground. It barely helps, but it's silly and is therefore required. With the initial 8 down, we have every single tool in our arsenal and enter the end game, the Dr. Cossack stages. Important note, our current weapon ammo is remembered between stages for the remainder of the game. Since enemy drops are random, how much remaining ammo you have on each weapon at a specific time can vary wildly. You'll have to use your own best judgment on which weapons to refill and save ammo with the buster when you have a relatively safe opportunity. After rain flushing the first set of wheelers, charge up a pharaoh shot for the first skeleton Joe. It's finally time to bring out our good boy's patented aerial form, Rush Jet. He's unfortunately received a very necessary software update and is far less versatile than before, but can still be used to skip most of this screen. Halt once you reach this skeleton Joe, who you can kill with a hovering pharaoh shot. Now that we're watching our ammo, it's important to remember that pharaoh shot will only expend ammo when a shot is fired. Killing an enemy with the hovering sun is completely free. Additionally, you can begin charging for free by pressing and holding the button at a time Rockman isn't capable of firing, such as the pause screen. After grabbing the weapon ammo, finish off the rest of your journey with Rush Jet and coil all the way up until this first weapon pellet, which you should use to refill Rush Jet. You should now have more than enough Rush ammo for the remainder of the game, so all other weapons take priority. Make sure you climb down and back up the lower ladder before flying across with Rush to ensure the claw hazard is predictably timed. Equip Ring Boomerang and enter the boss fight against the giant moth. I'm actually not 100% certain on the pattern here, but I've gotten the impression it fires its bullets on a timer, and will dive downward at seemingly random. Despite that seeming randomness, it's never actually dived while I was sliding under, so don't be too afraid to do so unless you find evidence otherwise. Your attacks will only reach the moth's hitbox at its lower elevations, so time them out patiently. Don't rush your attacks or you risk a bullet getting shot at you at just the wrong time. Even with cautious play, I can still take it down within two cycles. In Cossack Stage 2, take the left ladder, drink a small latte while the pinecones curse Cossack's level design, rain flush the upcoming skull spawner, and rush jet across the spike chasm. Spam buster shots during the journey to take out the enemies along the way, who always spawn at your elevation, and make a couple stops for energy refills. Equip Pharaoh Shot on the far ladder, hold down the charge, and let the upcoming buzzsaw walk into it for an ammo-less takedown. Switch to Balloon. It's not going to make these spike platforms stress-free, but is absolutely safer than platforming the old-fashioned way. Time it so you move past the first set while the spikes are vertical, jump past as they change horizontal, and land on the last two blocks when they turn horizontal. In the upper room, proper timing will allow you to squeeze past with only a single balloon. Rain flush to the end of the next room. You could totally jump the last gap on foot, but screw economics and conveniently ride Rush Jet for 10 centimeters. Both the next two rooms are free and lead to the boss fight against Square Machine. Its pattern is thankfully extremely simple both to understand and to dodge. If it moves at full or mid speed, slide under. If it moves at slow speed, jump and slide inside. It will open its weak point to fire three bullets, all predictably timed. Jump up with Dust Crusher in between, but absolutely feel free to waste an attack opportunity if you need to get your bearings. This is about the point in the game where my fight or flight instincts kick in, making simple input mistakes a lot more common. Keep calm and get in a shot every once in a while until earning a brief moment of relief. Cossack Stage 3 begins with an auto-scroller. Other than the very predictable spinning orbs, there are just two turrets on the top path. 
Memorize their positions and take them both out with Rain Flush right when they're spawning in. Important note that is completely pointless, but very stupid. If you attach to a platform with wire near the beginning and let the screen push you aside, you can clear this screen by sipping a latte as you ascend to the heavens. Rockman is still legally being pushed upward by wire and will continue that upward journey until he finds a ceiling, which will probably take a while. Once the screen is fully scrolled, you can still cancel wire as usual. Notice the jumping enemy moved to the right. That's because I moved Rockman to the right. He just needs a little bit of time to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Once Rockman is back on screen, you can grab the ladder and continue the level. As funny as this is, and while it's technically safer than platforming, I personally don't use this strat since there are two large weapon energy pickups along the way that we'd have to skip. I'm sorry. Back on track, ring boomerang the saw blades in the upper room and rush to leave ASAP. If you stall too long, it's possible for the floating enemy to spawn on top of you while climbing the ladder. The next auto-scrolling section is super simple and easy, buster only. If you're curious, yes, you can do the glitch here as well, but it's slightly more non-viable. Not only would you be skipping weapon energy, there's a solid wall at the end, and apparently Dr. Cossack managed to get his hands on an infinite height building permit. Equip Pharaoh Shot, and very, very importantly, hold left on the D-pad while jumping through the boss door. Actually, also, double super important note that I didn't figure out until recording demo footage for this video. Hit the boss door while your jump is arcing upward and continue holding the jump button. This makes Rockman bop upward slightly, which is a tiny bit sillier and thus required. This boss comes in two. The first cockroach only clings to the ceiling, while the second moves faster and rotates along the entire wall. When it's on the ceiling, try to hit it with your hovering charge. Not only does this let you attack directly above your head, you'll retain your level of charge and can still throw the now non-existent shot when you release the fire button. As for dodging, keep as much distance between you two as possible when the cockroach is traveling below. When it's traveling above, it should be safe enough so long as you're not standing directly below its dead center. Don't be afraid to waste ammo either, pausing the game now risks messing up your timing and Pharaoh Shot has plenty. Once both roaches are dead, you enter the final level, Cossack Stage 4. For ultra show-off points, make sure you make the jump to grab both weapon energy drops without having to summon Rush. If you fail, your run isn't forfeit, but you are officially lame. Rain flush the turrets in the next room, and don't worry, the top turret's bullets are at least one pixel away from hitting you, which is enough. When you reach the fork, take the right path, the easier and less ammo expensive of the two. From that point on, you won't face any major danger until the boss door. Just one note, the spawning skulls make for a quick and easy weapon farm if you're exceptionally low, but if you rationed well, this shouldn't be necessary. When you're ready, equip wire for some reason and enter the final boss battle against the Cossack Catcher. As soon as the battle begins, run against the wall, turn around, wait for Cossack to approach, and time a wire shot upward. This won't be enough to beat Cossack, but it's basically free and will give you a major head start. You'll notice that sometimes you can hit him twice with one wire shot depending on his height and the shot's timing, but please resist the temptation to stall your shots. While that is possible and can deal extra damage, I can consider it too great a risk. Once out of ammo, switch to charged buster shots. Cossack has only two attacks, a volley of three bullets in your direction and an automatic grab if ever Rockman is standing below him. The grab will not occur if Rockman is sliding instead. Play it safe, watch for the bullets, always slide under Cossack and get two or three hits in. Surprise plot twist, Kalinka is convinced by Blues to come clean and admit she was behind this all along. She firmly believes that glitches are cheating and that Rockman didn't deserve to save the world, convincing her father to dedicate his life to punching Rockman in the face as a birthday present. Finally able to stop and feeling the weight of his actions, Cossack will insist on apologizing and explain to Kalinka that glitches are a part of life that should be embraced during the length of the most needlessly unskippable cutscene in video game history, which incredibly coincidentally lasts as long as it takes for you to use the bathroom. Through. You'll wash your hands just in time to see the end of the cutscene where Dr. Wily comes back from the dead as an alien zombie. They don't address this in-game, but if you check the wiki, Kalinka asked her dad pretty please for the Necronomicon. Time for the second and true endgame in Wily Castle.
Wily Stage 1 is full of mats in three varieties. Standard and underwater mats can be killed in one hit with either the Buster or Rain Flash. Ballet mats are killed in three hits with those weapons or one hit with a fully charged Pharaoh or Buster shot. Use Rain Flash for the standard mats in the first two rooms, then the Buster on the remaining ballet mats. While slightly more risky, you've got the space to retreat easily and Rain Flash ammo is valuable right now. At the underwater area, swap to Rush Marine. This might seem unnecessary, but remember, this late in the run, your nerves are gonna be shot, and it's a lot easier to flub precise timing on a jump than Rush Marine movement. Swap out of Rush when the path drops and narrows, take out the last med on foot, then use a Pharaoh Shot charge to eliminate the saw blade in the next room for free. That room can be safely jumped through without item usage, but in the next, you should use Rush Jet to bypass the spike gap, then either wire or balloon to reach the upper path. You'll only have wire if you are lucky enough to get a small energy drop earlier in the stage, so get used to both strategies. On the final screen, use a charged Pharaoh shot to take out the first ballet met, then charged buster shots on the following two on ground level. Equip Ring Boomerang and enter one of the most stressful boss fights in the entire run, Met Daddy. His pattern is as follows. He'll come out of his helmet, wait a random amount of time, jump to your current position, and retreat into his helmet. Upon landing, he creates a shockwave that stuns Rockman if grounded, and additionally will spawn four Mets from the top of the screen. These Mets will be in groups of two and walk towards the screen exit. Shortly after all four Mets are gone, Met Daddy will stand back up and repeat the pattern. Ring Boomerang doesn't deal damage fast enough to safely kill him before he locks you at the edge of the screen. You'll have to somehow get past this giant Met while dodging its even more giant hitbox. Going underneath is possible, but absolutely out of the question. That leaves traveling above. Stick relatively close while firing Ring Boomerang, getting ready to jump away. How to deal with the small Mets depends on context. If you have enough wiggle room, pause buffer while keeping your eyes on the top of the screen. As soon as you know where the Mets will be landing, adjust your position accordingly, then attack with Ring Boomerang. If you don't have enough wiggle room, you'll instead have to swap to Rain Flush, timing its firing to kill the Mets in midair. Once you're close to a wall, switch to Balloon. Fire your first balloon early, but stall the second balloon. Jump over Met Daddy as he jumps under you. Make sure you're not still standing on the balloon when he lands either. Standing on the balloon is technically still legally grounded, so the shockwave will still freeze you. On a good run, you'll only have to pass above Met Daddy twice before he runs out of health. Wily Stage 2's design should be pretty easy to figure out. All enemies are ones you should already know how to safely deal with. My only major note is that once you reach this screen, equip and charge up Pharaoh Shot, sit back, and drink a latte. This is the safest farming spot before the true endgame, letting you sit here with the B button held down until weapon energy appears. While it's not technically necessary to fill up literally everything, since there are still a bunch of guaranteed energy drops ahead, it all needs to be filled up almost all the way, with the exception of the Russian wire items, which will see no more use. Once satisfied, make the rest of the trek to the boss fight against Taco Trash with drill missiles equipped. Keep a careful eye on Taco, who will randomly launch a fireball straight forward or a bomb to your current position. Your goal is to land a single hit on its weak point with Drill Missile. Once it's been hit, abandon all logic and reason and literally walk directly into Taco Trash. You are now completely and 100% safe to win the fight buster only. If you're wondering whether this is a glitch, gosh, I'd love to know too, because isn't this silly? Taco Trash, as you would expect, does begin the battle with a damaging contact hitbox. For some astronomically stupid reason, however, if Taco Trash receives drill missile damage, that hitbox ceases to exist, removing the only obstacle stopping the player from giving Taco a hug. I'm guessing what happened is a dev fell asleep at the keyboard and accidentally copy-pasted the destructible wall attribute onto Taco's contact hitbox, which apparently is a thing that can just happen by accident. Regardless of why it happens, it's incredibly convenient and stupid, so abuse it at the first opportunity to cook Taco for free. Next up is the second final level, Wily Stage 3. Refill your most empty weapons in the first room, grab the final E-Tank, and drop down the left side with flash stopper mashing to bypass the shields below. Hug the left wall while falling to the next screen so you can grab another line of weapon energy and continue your descent into the initial eight refights. Our strategies here will be mostly identical to the first battles, but some important stipulations apply. Drill Man absolutely must be fought before Dust Man and Ring Man. 
All three of their strategies use Balloon, but Drill Man is the only one of the three without a backup strat, and how many total balloons we need is largely decided by RNG. You'll almost always have enough balloons for all three combined, but I'm sure you realize the exact moment you leave an opening for bad RNG, it's gonna happen ten times in a row. Also worth noting is Pharaoh Man is now fought on flat ground. While this makes him harder to hit if you freeze him in midair, it also makes his shots easier to dodge if you encounter his glitch, so this should altogether be safer than the first fight. Otherwise, use all your original strats and pray your fingers don't slip, because God knows your controller is drenched in sweat. With all eight dead, equip the buster and enter the second final boss battle and arguably the hardest boss battle in the entire game, Wily Machine number 4. Walk slightly in front of him, charge up the buster, and sip a latte while draining his health bar with absolutely no danger. If you thought I was joking when I said this was arguably the hardest boss battle, bad news time, this fight has two phases. In phase two, Wily's elevation will set slightly above Rockman's head, and he'll take to firing energy blasts at a constant rate while randomly wiggling left and right. These energy blasts will be aimed toward Rockman if he's in range, and otherwise will be fired straight forward. As you can see, standing below the backside of the machine is a 100% safe zone, but safety is meaningless without a way to actually deal damage, and no tools with remaining ammo in our arsenal are capable of attacking Wily without putting ourselves in some kind of danger. Even if we hypothetically had gone out of our way to refill wire ammo earlier, I consider it too big a risk as Wily could back up and punish us with an energy blast. Instead, bide your time, sip a couple lattes, and keep your eyes out for the golden opportunity. The ideal situation is to enter the danger zone as Wily Machine is located in roughly the center of the screen and currently moving to the right side. This gives an ideal compromise of screen space to maneuver Rockman while also giving Wily the ability to continue moving away from you. If Wily is moving away from you, his energy blasts will be more spaced out. Be very, very patient. Wily wiggles almost as much as his eyebrows, aggravatingly wasting full-on minutes before presenting an opportunity. At which point, your nerves will have exploded so many times in a row, it might be best you wait until next time. Once the opportunity presents itself, and you accrue the necessary bravery, run out, detonate a drill missile next to Wily's weak point, and slide back into safety. With proper timing and good RNG, you'll slide under the energy blasts. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee Wily will act like you're expecting. It unfortunately took me a couple embarrassing failures to realize this, but if you end up in a tight spot, do not try to dodge. Instead, pull out the final weapon of the game, Skull Barrier, which will negate each energy blast on contact. This will be the longest RNG endurance match yet seen in the series. Be patient and think through every move before you make it, and any sufficiently cool-headed player will be able to take down Wily Machine No. 4 damageless 100% of the time. With Wily Machine No. 4 destroyed, Wily will escape into the really, truly final level for real this time, Wily Stage 4. Side note, no, using Rain Flesh to kill Wily in his capsule does not count as beating the game. Wily in his capsule is a completely separate enemy from the final boss, Wily Capsule, and the former is a completely optional enemy who does not trigger the ending upon defeat. Methodically buster through the final caterpillar hallway, swap to Pharaoh Shot, jump in the final, final, final boss door, and get ready for a victory lap. While certainly not a freebie, Wily Capsule is one of the easier damageless bosses, and to my memory, I've never once failed to beat him after learning his pattern, even in practice. Wily can only hurt you either with his aimed electric shot, which has a long and obvious tell before firing, or with his direct contact hitbox. The contact hitbox doesn't legally exist until he becomes visible, which coincides with the energy shot properly forming, making the exact timing obvious. Wily can only appear in preset locations, and the only preset location which would overlap with a grounded rock man is at the dead center of the screen. Knowing this, in order to reliably dodge both Wily and the Electric Orb, position yourself at the center of the screen. Watch for the orb spawn location and escape to either the left or right edge accordingly.
was so worried there for a second. He had me locked in, like, right at the edge of the screen with a bullet heading towards me. I thought I was going to get hit after I beat the final boss. Oh my god. <laughs> with Wily's resurrected ambition put on yet another hiatus, the Rockman 4 Mr. Perfect Run is mission complete. Before heading out, special shout out to YouTube channel Sequel Wars video explaining the AI behind each of the initial eight bosses. The in-depth info was incredibly helpful, and even if you're not planning on doing the run yourself, is interesting to know anyway. I should also note they apparently made that video as a part of making their own sequel to Rockman Mega World, which is still in development. Has nothing to do with the challenge run, but it's neat. And if you were interested in throwing money at my face, an important announcement. In the interest of preventing the ends of videos, from dragging too long, vocal shoutouts will be moving to the $10 tier on Patreon on October 1st. To hopefully make up for it a little, also on October 1st, all commentated videos will become available to patrons at the $5 tier. Hopefully this helps me lose a few pounds. On a related note, special thanks to all Patreon backers, including Anon42, RB Drock, Solon Zero, Leslam, Chris Nate, Alexander Botkin, Anu Akrira, Vincent Hall, Alex Nelson, Lively Leader, the Patreon supporter formerly known as Jay Snilges, Rundum Goy, Vaith. Never mind, I can't come up with something better. Game Jam says trans rights are human rights. Rory Kelly, Lane Robert Leishman, Liddy Kitty, Salty Sweet, Hashtag EMT and Specialist Xander Kozak, Crustacean Creep, Jace Harsh, Nikki Wiki 34, Nathaniel Kalita. Evil Game Champ is like bad. Bad evening, nobody, and unwelcome forward to WH Facts, the offline on paper board game movie. My actual username is Wibejamin. Do not ask me how to pronounce this, I want to see you guess. Multicore, Celestial Cookie, Veravias, Curbs D50, Jorb, Damien R, Yapalonzo, Dwaro25. Britface says, You think changing the vocal tier can stop my love and support? Uh... World's slowest game of chess has not been abandoned. I'm just dumb, bad at chess, and quite honestly, losing track of the board. Star Captain Eli Shaba of Clan Ghost Bear, Wispy Syrup, Riley Anderson, Arcombs, every bad opinion about Homestuck is wrong. I know because I I am Vriska. Slowest game of chess black. Thinking about next move. What's that noise? Nova. Sinique says hashtag land back. Sith Uggles and Dragon. Eric Baron. Zero. Mars Becker. XEY. Now I only want to triumph. Ivy Mackie. Drawn by AJ. The one true AJ. Lynette Bowman. Mackie B. Hi, I'm Game Champ and I make my living off of reading funny names and playing video games incorrectly. Admiral Ampersand. Literal cat Sylvie Wing Catgirl is gay and doesn't go to bed on time. Reblog if you too are gay and or don't go to bed on time. Eve Cable. Attempted wholesomeness. Lily someone found my underscore hooray sap. It was under the rug. Sound of Rain. Ryan Garvey. Milk Succubus. Grand Nero. Nick, give me Chippasan. Did you know that Dokuta Kosaku from Rokuman Yon likes to watch ballet? Literally, Judas Nora Aura. The Smilodon or Sabertooth Tiger is not a tiger, but a relative of the Clouded Leopard, which also has saber teeth. The Jellybean Warlock. For the Angel of Death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed. Sorio 99, Jack Silverson, Dakota Riggs, Infamous Peace, Maddie Serengetto. If you're seeing this, then I forgot to change my Patreon name again before the latest video. How embarrassing would that be? Doodlesack 12, Trish Chandler, Airtide 11, Genduro. Robjection says there is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy and there is no Walt Disney Studios. Awkward Silence, I pompous. Many sentences within program were of a dangerous length and were performed by trained vocal practitioners. Don't try it home. Jen, the pink haired cat on Twitter.com says meow. Colin Monsma. Dark knit. Frequently a doofus, occasionally an idiot, always a fool. Idak. Carlo Calcaterra. Brisky. Margaret Josephine. Madrox07. Eagle Weege. Lemon Planter. Friendly reminder that it's not normal to sneeze. I have never sneezed. F. Amadon. Release Idola LP4. T. Bernelli 200. Quiet Mistrevis. Leverage. Hey, is anyone missing an underscore? I found one under the rug. Ian Beck. Landfair Pool. Needle, Gogory, Shoeater, and Drob, Willy, and Silly Go Go Goach. Kierkev, Biohazard, Nits a Gamer, Fluff System. The Glorious Return of Ah, I Missed You, Miss Champ. Rekindle with the Power of RNG. Sophia has transed her gender. Frilly Lily and Suverna. Sylveon underscore Superstar, hashtag 2290. Nemea, Corporate Enchantress, Tech Get, Chris Kusland. There is only one gender, it's mine, and you cannot have it. Mm -hmm. That hippie gamer, BJ Mashed Potato, is making Game Champ read more and is very sorry. Cody Merchant, Biggest Dickus. Um Gomk, my name is finally in a Game Champ video. Does this count as a haha funny? Mean name? Notice me, senpai. Kirito9979. Eleven Atrium. Can't think of a funny new name. They'll come up with something better next time. Promise. Kaiser says to live your life doing what you love while respecting and loving those around you. Howl's one-handed egg cracking technique. Moom and biscuit. Trans rights are human rights. Everyone's favorite trans dragon girl. Aurelia. Seltzer fountain man. Madison. Aussie Aussie Aussie. Oi oi oi. Touch tone banana phone. Zeta is pretty and is absolutely valid, and she will rise above her traumatic past. STL of the wild. Programmed on non-Euclidean duct tape for maximum minimalism. Wei Shi Linden. Melody Bunna. Ken of red lions. AI the Somnium files is an action puzzle 
puzzle visual novel made by Spike Toonsoft and is better than Don Gon Ronpa. The non-binary eldritch functional QA tester Igniality. Twin B the Tailmeister, Basic M, Game Plus 4. Getsugaru, Love Story Gaming TTV. I'm shy, but not like shy shy. My name's Cheyenne, but I go by Shy Shy. Krebin's 12, Complacent Moon. Amity, which among humans has watched the Owl House, it's very cool and based. Duna Nix, Dynamaton. Ethan. Well, at least my best friend isn't an uncuddleable. Scary Dinosaur. Andrew Kinney says, Snooping as usual, I see. Lex wants Game Jam to say, Go watch the Owl House, 210 show of all time. It's goaded, it's gnarly, watch it, so she spent. Grace, see me, hi Jen. Vanellia. I became a patron so I could have a simple name that Game Jam can pronounce easily at the end of the videos, and that name is Woe. Tyler Beauregard, Mr. One Up Machine, Flame Solace. Macaroni Cat is supporting Game Champ with the hope that one day the Patreon credits will be longer than the video's actual topic. Tender Tyler 88 supports shoveling money directly into Champ's face. Do it for her. Alexander Merrill, Lock Robin, Okitan. Don Gun Rumpa is a mystery horror visual novel series made by Spike Tunesoft and is better than AI the Somnium Files. Tuniflo, Celica, Stan's Plaid Jacket, Eric Williams, DJ Oshawa, Ray Danger, Kelzini, Galactic Bonesman, Awesome Games, Amuse of Fire, Smeed, Gay People Rule, Robin with a Y, Harry Stovall. No more memes. You don't need to change, it's boring being the same. Flamingo, oh, 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 you're pretty either way. It's just red. I just want to hear Game Champ say games are dumb, so play dumb games again. Autistic Yu-Gi-Oh. Welcome to how many adjectives can Daybreak add to their name for the next video? Trying to hit the character limit, stay hydrat. Symphony Smith, The Haunting, Gaming Medic, Carolyn, Judge Relib, Tempest 23, Ray Ray, Troy Johnson, Zeno, Olwen Klein, Sonic Kurosaki, The One Free Skeleton, Stormage, Lissa Poppy, Toast 90, TV Rockwell, Doss Springy has arrived, Bask in his Radiance, Moonage Dream, Aware Quicks, Nicole the Gamer Girl and Gamer Girl, Queen Kenda, Justin Buergi, Critical Hit, a German meanie wants you to pronounce Rindfleisch, Kitty Rung, Super Washung, South Gabin, Uber, Tragung, Always Dregel, Witchcraft or Asagi, Rio Lexington. I only created a Patreon name to hear Game Champ say Mamma Mia, that's a spicy meatball. Spartan Style, Haleran, T Wibs, Pokechap, Trans Rights or Human Rights, so says your fearless leader, the all powerful and omnipotent Chairman Meow, Tour Bit, Jinx Shadow, Amber Violet, Maybe Not Accent, The Caffeine Addicted Cyborg, Dark Red Knight 004, Alla Remora, Transient Fay, Ackle Karamsum, Alexander St. Pierre, Cryptic Rug, Skrunga Lord, Master of the Bungus, Random Internet Cat is a random cat on the internet and should not under any circumstances be trusted to do non cat things, Wallace to Ark, Fleet Commander of the Siege Dancers, Hyper Simulacra, Brian is a curse word, Zach Crowder, Kimberly says hello to their partner who they know watches Game of Champasan and Dave the Bard. Charles Surrett, hey, I'm sorry, Charles. I, I bet you were you were really sad that your name didn't get called out earlier. I just somehow it did. I I just missed it. I'm sorry, Charles. You're so cool, Charles. Everybody say happy birthday to Charles. Let me know how much this video sucks and how to improve in the comments below. Thank you for your Rockman 5 suggestion, which somehow you managed to comment before this video even went live and get out of my house.